So you think you know JavaScript. Let me ask you a very difficult question in JavaScript, which is based on event loops. You see that you get all those nasty questions in JavaScript with type conversion and all that stuff, but that is especially not very um, practical and useful in production applications. But concepts of event loop and queues like micro task queue, task queues, stuff like that, that actually happens in real world as well. So let me ask you this question and explain you the exact procedure why we got that particular output. And this could be a very popular interview question as well. Make sure you pay close attention to what's happening in this whole video. So this is the source code of this page right here you see, uh, which you just saw, which consisted of just these two buttons. We have two buttons, button one and button two. On clicking button one, what I'm doing is I'm invoking two listeners, listener one and listener two. These Both of these functions are exactly identical, right? Except the fact that they have different console log statements with them, especially with the number one and number two being the main things. Rest of the stuff is same. At this point, I want you to pause the video, take a very good look at the whole thing, what's happening, what is happening, and predict the output for the console log statements when I click on the button one. If you can do that correctly, you are very good with the event loop concept at least in JavaScript, which is one of the core fundamental things how JavaScript works, right? Irrespective of the runtime, whether it's Node or in the browser or Dino or whatever. So this is how internally JavaScript works, the event loop works. So I'm gonna give you five seconds to pause the video, pause it, run through the code, write down the output. And once you do that, let's just go ahead and compare. Let's go and take a look at what happens. So I'm gonna run, I'm gonna click the button first and then I'm gonna take you through why the output is, what the output is. So I'm gonna click here and you see that this is the output right here. Now to explain this output, I would actually create three, uh, rather four queues. That is four arrays. The first one would be call stack. This would be our active call stack. The second one is going to be task queue, which is also called as callback queue um, sometimes, but I just like to call it task queue or macro task queue. Then we have micro task queue, right? And then finally, um, yeah, I think this, this much should be fine. I actually wanted to put in request animation frame as well because it has its own queue, but I really did not because that would have made it um, impossible kind of like because you know request animation frame is kind of dicey to predict if your system is fine and everything it's going to run at 60 fps and it's going to render you know aggressively on the screen but i just don't want it to get into that rare condition and all that stuff when you might get a different output right different from the from from what's always going to happen so that's why i did not include request animation frame but here we are so starting off, when I click on this button, what happens is that these two listeners are um, invoked by the internal JavaScript. And one quick thing, by the way, I won't be really getting deep into how these things really work. That is the task queue, the micro task queue, and the execution order and all that stuff. I want you to enroll in the advanced JavaScript course if you want to study all of this theoretical and practical stuff in depth, which is available on codedam.com. So you can find the links in the description, join the course. It would be awesome to actually discuss this level of this level of you know stuff in JavaScript, the internals. Anyway, coming back to the video, what happens is listener one and listener two are invoked by the browser, and how the browser invokes them is not by pushing them on the call stack directly because you know something might have been executing at that point, so you don't want to interrupt the execution. So it will put that in the task queue, right? So browser puts listener one and listener two in the order which we specified in the task queue, and it will just let the V8, the event loop do its job. So event loop would say, hey, call stack is empty. So why not? Let's just take a look at micro task queue and task queue. It sees that micro task queue is also empty. So nothing's to do here. 
Well, task queue is not empty, so let's just go ahead and pick up listener 1 and put it in the call stack. It is in the call stack, that means it is executing, right? So it's executing, so I'm gonna take a look at listener 1 and here we have it. Listener 1 says set timeout should be the statement that should run. So it takes set timeout, puts it on the call stack, but set timeout does not really do a lot of stuff, right? Set timeout just says that hey, just go ahead and pass this function right here to the task queue, will you please? Well, JavaScript says okay, fair enough, here you go. So JavaScript places the set timeout function on the task queue because that is what set timeout uses internally. It uses task queue, not a, not a micro task queue. Then what we have is a promise.resolve statement. So promise.resolve is again placed on the call stack. By the way, set timeout is done because you know it, it was just there for the execution and placing it up on the task queue. So promise.resolve is here. Then you know once we call the then method, what happens is that this function right here is placed on the micro task queue. Fair enough, right? And we proceed forward. Now here's a little twist. At this point, what we do is that we resolve a promise, but we don't really um, place what should happen. We don't really instruct what should happen next once it's resolved, right? So we do not really have a sort of a callback for what should happen when this promise resolves. That means nothing happens at this point, at this particular point in terms of callbacks and stuff. So what happens next is that set timeout actually takes, um, again, the same thing happens. Set timeout places its callback on the task queue right here. Then we get to the main thread, that is the actual console log statement, and we get our first output, which is exactly what you see as the first line, right? Now, we have another set timeout at this point, but what happens this time is that this whole thing right here is placed on the task queue, right? Because set timeout operates on the task queue. Although we have a micro task queue kind of thing going on here, but it still is on task queue because it has not executed yet. So it does not know that it has to be placed on micro task queue. Fair enough. So once we have that, the listener one is done, right? It is finished. So it is, oops, I think I left this call stack here. But yeah, you get the idea. Listener one is finished and the call stack is empty. The moment call stack becomes empty, what happens is JavaScript says, hey, do you have anything in micro task? And if yes, if micro task queue is not empty, it will exhaust the whole micro task queue at once. Fortunately, we just have a single task this time. So it just picks up that, it places up it in, in the call stack, it runs it, and we get our second line of output, that is hello from promise one, which is exactly what we see. At this point, our call stack is empty and our micro task queue is also empty. It's time to take a look at task queue. Now we have listener 2 waiting for it to be executed, right, from our initial click. So it has not executed listener 2 yet. So it's going to take it, take that up from the task queue, place it in the call stack, and we are good to go. Now we take a look at listener 2, we start executing stuff. Again, we have some set timeout stuff right here. So that's going to be on task queue one more time. And then we have promise.resolve.10 that makes it to micro task queue which is right here then we have another promise just like the earlier one nothing happens here then we have another set timeout so it also places that on the task queue not micro task queue there we have it then we finally arrive on the main thread which console logs the statement one more time right and here you go so you see the hello from main thread as the third output line which is exactly what should happen and finally, we get this another statement as well from the um, set timeout, which is being placed on the task queue, not micro task queue, right? So here we have it. At this point, listener to exits, it's done. So call stack becomes empty. Again, um, JavaScript would start asking, hey, micro task queue, do you have anything in you? Well, yep we have a function waiting for micro task queue so it picks it up inside call stack runs it executes it whatever 
and we get our fourth line of output which is hello from promise one and our call stack becomes empty again so we see that we get the exact same output so far now it's time to execute task queue because we do not have anything else at all in in the whole picture so we execute task queue one by one now the very important thing here to remember is that task queue um, javascript picks up one task from task queue in a single cycle and then that's it then we'll run the event loop again it will check if micro task queue is empty or not and it will execute micro task queue stuff but it would not keep on executing task queue um, forever like it will not try to exhaust all the tasks if this were a micro task queue and javascript was starting execution micro executing micro task queue it will basically execute all the things right here unless this task queue is empty unless that micro task queue is empty but javascript does that with micro task queue it does not do that with the task queue so it's going to take up one thing right here right so if if at this point i try to start i try to um, you know calculate the cycle so i would say this is cycle zero at this point it's going to take this thing from the task queue put it in the call stack execute it and um you know just just copy that thing and put it right here i'm not gonna do this call stack part because it takes a little bit of time but you can understand that whenever i'm put picking up something it goes to the call stack and it is being executed so this is cycle zero right now we are at cycle one similar thing happens hello from timeout two that is what we get and uh, that's what happens in cycle one that's it done and dusted then we arrive at cycle two right so in cycle two what happens is that this is executed in the call stack this is executed in the call stack and this means that we need to put this on on the micro task queue so javascript would pick this thing up it will pick this thing up and it will place it inside the micro task queue right and we are done here at this point you see that javascript would interrupt the execution of the cycle or whatever like it will not proceed but it will actually check if micro task queue was empty or not and this time it is not empty so we are still at cycle 2 remember i am not i have not updated the cycle to cycle 3 so still um, it sees that something is there in the micro task queue so it's going to pick that up it's going to bring that to call stack it's going to execute it and we are going to get this output right here right then we um, see that micro task queue is empty and we have already executed task queue at least once in the cycle so we proceed forward in the cycle three i pick this up again i'm not gonna just copy that in the call stack this time but you know you would get the idea so that's it so that's all that happens in cycle three in cycle four that's all that happens i just copy this paste this right here and remove this right and uh, that's what happens in cycle four so we are now at cycle five a similar thing happens this thing right here is placed in the call stack right that means this is executed this is placed in the micro task queue right and then finally um, this is removed from the call stack task queue is empty and then finally in the same cycle what's going to happen it's going to take this thing put it in the call stack and execute the output for you here we are right so that is exactly what happens and at this point every queue is empty and we are done with the output so if we try to compare what we calculated with what we have actually received you're going to see it's pretty similar and it's actually same so hello from main thread hello from promise one hello from main thread again hello from promise one um, then we have timeout one and timeout two which is again fine then we have promise two coming from the first listener then we have timeout one and timeout two coming from the second listener and then we have promise two coming from the second listener. Whew, so yeah, I believe this was a wild ride, to be honest. And if you have not a good understanding of the micro task queue and the task queue and the call stack and stuff like that, which happens under the hood, it is a very, very difficult to question to get the order correct in the first go. So 
if you were not able to do this i would recommend just clearing off your basics about event loop how it works everything the call stack the task queue micro task queue you can use the advanced javascript course on codedam.com codedam.com which would allow you to understand these concepts in a much better way especially take a look at the event loop section and uh, understand in depth how all these things happen so that's all for the, this for this video in the next video which would be a part two i would be covering a bonus question that is i will be clicking this button which has this particular particular code associated with it and this changes everything trust me so yeah that's that's basically it for this video if you liked it don't forget to like and subscribe thank you for watching i'll see you then in the next one really quick